Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home it's the day before Thanksgiving. Wow. I'm yeah. probably sure that there's lots of cooking, lots of preparing going on, or maybe you're going to someone's house. We want to hear from you. Send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today we have a great show for you. We have our beloved friends, John and Deborah Giles from Agnus Day Farm. You can go to their website, agnusdayfarm.com. We love the Giles. We love, we love the Giles. Them. We have beautiful yeah. memories and long history with the Giles. Yeah. Um, gosh, we met them back in the 80s. Yeah. Not to date ourselves, we're all still very young, but we were old and we got involved with them. We met them, I think, when we were doing uh, Operation Rescue. Right. Yeah. And um, I remember uh, Deborah and John coming up our driveway one day. We were in the rectory, and uh, you and Deborah were getting ready to go out to uh, Kansas City. You're going out to yeah. Kansas. Wichita. Wichita. Yeah. And um, yeah. But they're just great examples yes. of love for Christ and Christ's love for them. Their journey is similar to ours of yes. going from Protestantism to the Catholic faith, their children, um, their love for the poor, for the helpless, and so, so anyway, we won't have to have them on if we tell everything I about know. them. So that we yes. Learn. It's going to be a great show. But we're so close to Thanksgiving and uh, you know we've been doing a little bit of traveling and of course we went back north and spent some time there for a very special wedding. Yes. Um, my sister's um, grandson, Anthony, uh, was married to Margo. And, you know, I've mentioned that my sister was married to Anthony, her husband, for 62 years. Anthony or Tony or Nino, we call him. So she's recently lost her husband, and this is why I'm thankful. I'm thankful for him, the years we had with him. And this wedding was just so incredible. My sister was really incredible, Camille. Um, because, you know, here she is still grieving the loss. It's just it's a recent loss of her husband of 62 years. And she's at this wedding. Now, there's a lot of Anthony. So her husband was Anthony, her son, the doctor, Anthony. Then he has a son, Anthony. This is the one who was getting married. And they have a little grandchild from one of the other grandchildren, right. Kara and David. And his name is James Anthony. But, you know, my sister was at this, and she was just, she was dancing. Mm -hmm. And at one point, you know, we were at her table, and she just went around and said, let's, let's toast little Anthony, little mm -hmm. Anthony, let's toast. And I just had such admiration for her and for her faith, mm -hmm. and that we have a faith that overcomes death. Yes. You know, life overcomes death. Death doesn't have the last word. We're grateful as well for all of our grandchildren and children. Little one of our grandchildren, Amelia, is now sitting up, and so that's a big deal. She is just a doll, yes. and so a lot to give thanks for this Thanksgiving. Well, you know, it really it's the, uh, life. There's a great Italian saying: "It's a malia dolce." There is the bitter. There is the sweet. Life goes on um, when we lose our loved ones. Maybe you're experiencing this Thanksgiving, your first Thanksgiving without your loved yeah. one, and God and God alone is going to comfort you. God and God alone is going to give you the strength and the grace to get through that difficult time. We always tell you to keep it on EWTN. Even more importantly, keep it on the Lord Jesus Christ in every circumstance, in every situation that you can give thanks to him who is worthy of that Thanksgiving. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back where you are at home with Jim and Joy. And today I am so delighted to bring to you our dear friends, John and Deborah Giles. They live on a beautiful farm. It's called Agnus Day Farm. And um, they're going to tell you a little bit about this story and their journey of love and family and marriage and all the beautiful things that God has brought them through. And there's so many things that they have to be thankful and grateful 
four. Oh, no. Well, here they are. Tell our family a little bit about yourselves, about, first of all, how long you married, and tell our family how important um, being grateful, being Catholic, and all the things God has done. Yeah, you weren't always life. Catholic, so in that particular aspect of it, what difference has the Catholic faith made regarding gratitude and thanksgiving? Whatever you want to start. We've been married 47 years, and we came in the church in 04, after probably a couple of two or three decades of being Protestant. And it's, it's, it just completed our life, you know. Right. It's the only church other than Eastern Church that has all seven sacraments. We've got the creed. Um, and, you know, well, we've got Well, there was always a restlessness, too, mm -hmm. as there Protestants. Was. And um, there's no restlessness anymore. Mm -hmm. It was like, I know there's something missing. Yeah. But apostolic succession, and you know our story. Seven yep. years for us, it was a journey when it began after right. uh, asking you about the Apostles' Creed. I said, you know, where'd that, when you were Episcopal yeah. priest, I said, where did that come from? And right. that started it. Right. Mm -hmm. And Deborah was starving for, uh, for, for communion, the Eucharist. But we came in in 04, and yeah. we still get excited about the two words, mm -hmm. Roman Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I know a little bit about your background, and, and ours too. In, in other traditions that weren't Catholic. And you know, there's ups and downs every place you go and some things, but like, I, I think we had a pretty good experience. I think you did too, in the evangelical community and charismatic community and Pentecostal community. And, oh, yeah. you know, but there was a restlessness. I mean, you don't know what you're missing sometimes. And you were trying to be the best Christian people that you could be in that particular tradition and it was hard for us to leave. I mean, it's maybe some Catholics would be like, why is it hard when you don't know if you have the Eucharist or not? You don't have apostolic you don't have, we well, only know what you know, and you're trying to be obedient to it. But you made that journey by the grace of the Holy Spirit taking you. In particular, what difference has the Catholic Church made? I know you listed some of the aspects of it, like take the sacraments of the church, what, knowing you have the sacraments, or you know, what, what changes did it actually make to strengthen a good faith that you had and to strengthen a good marriage that you had, you know, overall for so many years and you came in, what's the difference? Why did you do what you do or what, what would you find? What happened you to you take a stand in the Catholic? Well, <laughs> one thing for sure is the communion because, it, it, you know, we were talking earlier about you go to some Protestant services and it's very painful to watch it because they kind of make it up as they go where in with the liturgy um, we know what's going to happen mm -hmm. we know how the service is going and um, but the communion is yeah uh, and you had some Episcopal background as well mm -hmm. what speak about the sacrament in particular the difference that the sacrament makes you the real presence of Jesus you've touched on it some what does that do for you what does it do for your marriage the real presence of well, Jesus. Well, you know, we become one with Christ. We become, you know, we're with that great cloud of witnesses and the communion, communion of the saints, saints. And, and it, you know, we're one together as companions. I, thinking back just for a minute about some of my Protestant friends, and they're good people and, and good, you know, good pastors, but, you know, they're two, two sermons away from being put on probation. You know, the Holy Spirit depended on that sermon out of that pulpit. In the Catholic Church, as we well know, the seven sacraments. And our church is, depends on the sacraments. Our church right. depends not on, on that's on where the, the Spirit is. Not on the homily. You're not saying probation, mm -hmm. they could be disciplined, they could be fired. Everybody could be fired. I, could, I remember Pulpit when I was, serving in, in no time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was serving in the Episcopal Church. We have a structure that's kind of similar, you know, with bishops. We could discuss are they really bishops, you know, in apostolic session and so on. But, you know, like the priests in the Episcopal Church can stay there, the, the governing board can't release them. Hmm. And so you can do some things. And the same thing in the Catholic Church. You'll have the support of your bishop. But we st spoke to a Baptist minister. This is about racial reconciliation. We had opened our doors to African American people, hmm. you know, and we weren't opening our doors years back. So, so we did, and they came in. And this Baptist minister was like, you know, I, I, I tell you what, this is right. We need to be together. Every person has the right to worship together. I'm going to do this. But I tell you what, I might not be around that long. He was hmm. gone the next week. Hmm. He was released the next week. That's where the apostolic mm. succession comes in and really yes. being able to speak, speak the truth. But our, you know, we're thankful for our Catholic faith. We're f thankful for our marriage of being one. She's my best friend. She's shown me more about unconditional love because I've got so <laughs> many flaws. 
but uh, just uh, very grateful for marriage. The sacrament of marriage mm -hmm. is very powerful. Compa it's, a companion. Right. It's, it's There's still, so many people that don't have a companion. Right. Well, I, you know, we were married so many years before we converted also, and I think being, and Jim was a good husband and a good provider, and I really loved him, but I think being Catholic did more for our marriage, right? Like, um, now I really get that he's making me holy and mm -hmm. I'm making him holy and you're learning how um, to die to yourself. And when you get the Eucharist, those are your superpowers to help mm -hmm. you to die to yourself, to be a better wife, to be a better mother, to be a better mother-in-law, to be a better Nona or Mimi or those people that God's I don't God's think I learned that at all mm -hmm. as Protestant. Mm -hmm. the, the, purpose of marriage was to get your spouse to heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So, and th and th so, that's because the deal is, you know, you're saved, he's saved. And so it's we're about all, being happy. It's about being happy. And God wants us. So you learn suffering in marriage and you learn how to be happy in suffering. You learn how to get superpowers so that you can suffer well when suffering comes our way. And all of us are called to suffer. But being Catholic brings beautiful meaning out of suffering and to be thankful for everything that God gives us. Being a giver and not a taker. Right. And, and what, what has Thanksgiving done not only just to the marriage but to your family in being thankful? Oh, I, I'm, I just wake up with a grateful heart mm -hmm. every morning. I, you know, um, you had a call in one of your earlier shows about a woman being thankful for having a warm bed. and mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just thankful for the little things. Yes. I have running water. There are people all over the world that don't have the wonderful... We just take all that for granted, that we can get in the car and go buy groceries. There's places you can't go. Well, the, mm -hmm. the pilgrims, the right. people who had the first Thanksgiving, they couldn't go down to the Walmart and mm -hmm. get a turkey. Mm -hmm. Or... Right. Uh, flour to make something. Mm -hmm. So. But you were talking about children. Yeah, that's what I was. You know, um, tell us about errors, your children. There are errors in our quiver. We had four children. We had one in a miscarriage. We lost a son when he was 19. So we have two living children. Wonderful children. We're just so blessed. I mean, we can't even. It's immeasurable how blessed we are. These yeah. these ch children are just great. Have wonderful spouses. Uh, they've got the great family. marriages, mm -hmm. and I think maybe a key to that was they got some pro bono. Premarital counseling from the Pentos, don't you think, Deborah? <laughs> I think that's the <laughs> but key. Anyway, and then we've got uh, 12 grandchildren. We've got nine girls, and we've got three boys. Wow. And uh, so when you get all those together, as you well know, during mm -hmm. things, it was just you just sit quiet and just watch them. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I told you before the show, our youngest, uh, she's now probably just a little over a year old. Her name is Vivian Noble. And she and I have got a thing going uh -huh. on. I tell you what, she's <laughs> waiting for me when I come in the door. Uh -huh. she's, she's happy to see you. She is a doll. Mm -hmm. And so what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Will people, will they come to, to the farm? Mm -hmm. Tell us what's going to happen there. Our son and his family and his mother and father-in-law are coming. Okay. And um, we just love sharing the farm mm -hmm. with family. This happens to be Stephen's favorite holiday of the year mm -hmm. is Thanksgiving, just from his memories as a child. Yeah. We'd always, always had a stranger at the table or whatever, but it was just a big day. And so uh, now our daughter, she's going, they rotate every year right. with mm -hmm. the family in Florida. As so you she have won't to be do in us. family. So yeah. she's rotating out this year, but we'll have a, looking forward to having our in-laws, our Stephen's in-laws, mm -hmm. and um, we'll, cook, we'll cook it up. And I do the chicken dressing like you. I'm, mm -hmm. the, I'm the one that does the chicken dressing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So looking Which is forward a good to getting thing. that done. Yeah. And, and what are you preparing? You doing the cornbread I'll, dressing? I, I'll have a lot mm -hmm. to do <laughs> to make him look good. <laughs> <laughs> I do all the stuff. She and does. then he, he's like um, Julia Childs. Uh -huh. He comes in she and he up. puts it together. <laughs> I just show and he up. looks so easy. Anyway, so. <laughs> but Deborah is so gifted and talented. You know, you've been around. She mm -hmm. knows how to put on an event, makes mm -hmm. it so special. Mm -hmm. The grandchildren get to witness how special yeah uh, and going the extra mile and and everything's made from scratch and the grandchildren you know being able to learn in fact I'm gonna have three of the Giles girls down teaching them how to make this chicken dressing which Wednesday is very night. important yeah. 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 yeah yeah because part of part of family is passing on the traditions right because we all 
we, we don't just come this way. Someone has to teach us. Someone has to, so that, and the goal is, is that one day when we are not able to do the cooking, they'll invite us to their house. Maybe. And maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Good> and then <laughs> the children or the grandchildren will, will say, did I make it the way you made it? Did I do what you taught me to do and how to prepare and, you know, making it uh, as elegant and lovely and beautiful as you possibly can? Tell us about, so the food sounds great, elegant sounds great. What else goes into the ambiance of that time? With so many today, where, where are cell phones in this? Where's the TV mm. in this? Where's other things that could take away from that? Anybody? Mm. So what do you do about that? Mm. And if you're doing something about that, you get kicked back or what? To share well, about that. We definitely <laughs> put our phones up and it, it just breaks my heart when I go into a nice restaurant and I see I a know. whole table of people mm -hmm. and no one is talking. Mm -hmm. Every one of them are on their cell phone mm -hmm. and it's a killer for yeah. fellowship. So we, d we discourage it. I wouldn't put a law down, but we don't we don't have hours out and then no instead TV of tv mm -hmm. put on music yeah. because music sets a tone like a you know frank mm -hmm. sinatra that's right. a nice sound mm -hmm. to fill your house with or our little chopin chopin mm -hmm. and yeah. then um it's country music goes real good down at our house <laughs> right. like kind of blue blue grass. Grass. That's, that's right yeah. for the hayride you yeah know, you want to yeah. talk about funny and fun listen to some bluegrass lyrics yes yeah, yeah. Well, so what an eclectic bonfire. collection. Well, we'll big bonfires. Well, so I'm sorry. So. Yeah. No, and then you do the bonfire. What happens with that? Well, just it stays so, contained. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After everybody's well, we eaten, we've taken a walk. We've been piling up wood all year for <laughs> it. So. so it'll be a huge bonfire, and the kids can almost marshmallow, toast a marshmallow at 50 feet. It's so hot. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. that is fine. so beautiful. I mean, that's so relaxing, and the sound of the popping, and mm -hmm. this and that of the wood, and being there and the smells that are there and people don't get outside and we'll have the outdoor right. chimney like, is going as well mm -hmm. so. we like we like to people don't get outside they right. don't mm -hmm. and uh, it lo it's looking like we could have thanksgiving on our screen porch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's going to really be nice. like 70. yeah so we weren't allowed to stay in the house like as when children. we got home, the, when we got home from school, it was like get out and play. Yeah, you didn't just get go, she didn't let was, you back in the house. It was a safer environment too, right. though. You know, right. yeah. it was so a different you, you world. Can, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. But but the but the deal is is that it doesn't just accidentally happen. Everything that we do has to be intentional. The cooking, the preparing, the created ambiance, the the welcoming, hospitable spirit. Like you you can have you know twenty people over to dinner. But if you don't have a hospitable, grace-filled home, nobody wants to come in because they're feeling all your tension, all your anxiety, no, that's another right? Thing. And so you have that all has to be intentional. Deborah is the best mm -hmm. at putting on an no. event. Joan, Joan is the best. Joan. This is the best story oh. about feeling hospitality. Mm -hmm. A friend when we were uh, at a church in Millbrook, Joan and Buck invited us over after mm -hmm. church. He, he just invited us, didn't ask her. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Joan had laundry, you know, that uh, needed to be folded and all that. Yeah. They were so relaxed. She just comes in, puts it into the basket. Mm -hmm. we're going, I don't know what we're going to eat. Let me go look in the refrigerator. I mean, Bologna relaxed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had the best time. Yeah. That's how host is supposed to be. Very right. hospitable. Right. So that's key, being hospitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Everybody's graceful. Special. Yes. Oh, yeah. she was full of grace. Mm -hmm. She's and full of grace thankful. and mm -hmm. full of hospitality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, People will have a variety of people over and so on and their different holidays. But yeah, you've got to be in it because you want to give. Because sometimes some yeah. of the people you have, I'm not talking about your family or, or our family, you know, some people you just don't know how to reciprocate anything or might say the wrong thing and so on. But you, you can't, it's got to be for the Lord. It's got to be just for loving them for that time. I want them well, to have a magical time. Right. I want them, of course, I got the country. I, mm -hmm. I have you a do. lot of things I don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. And I want them to enjoy what I used to have as a yeah. child. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, we named the farm Agnus Day Farm. Uh, you know, we became Catholic. Well, actually, God. you named it that mm -hmm. before we became Catholic. Mm -hmm. You like that symbol. That ancient symbol. She did. She oh, always well, did. I yeah. Always yeah. Why did you name it Lamb of God? Well, because the peace of God is present there. Mm -hmm. And the we've country. we've made it. You know, when, but when we have guests down, we want them to sense the peace of God. You know, just by being there. Mm -hmm. And of course, if we ship a little gift away, we want that peace to follow wherever it might go. If it goes mm -hmm. to the West Coast, but Lamb of God. Yeah. brings the peace that passeth all understanding. Amen. But, but it is, you're inviting in the step out of the world 
and to come and be. Not do anything, but just come and be with each other. Enjoy family, enjoy friends, and enjoy the presence of good God. It's like our friend K.O. says, I'm just sitting out on my porch thinking about nothing. <laughs> so beautiful. Well, thanks so much for beginning our this. Our pleasure. Thank share. you for having We look us. forward to having you back on, on Friday, continuing to share. And we're grateful having friends like you. Amen. We You're are. the best. Amen. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Hope that you are really getting ready for Thanksgiving Day. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today, Father Joseph joins us on our show. Father, how are you doing today? We're so happy to have you. Doing great. You know, it's good to talk with John before the show. They're farmers. Yeah. I grew mm -hmm. up on a dairy farm. Right. And he said, well, you farm for real, for a living. You know, they, theirs is more of a fun farm, he said. Mm -hmm. But I was. <laughs> but it's <laughs> still a lot of work. <laughs> it's still a lot of work. <laughs> yes. And it's great to have the great open outdoors, especially for family gatherings mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. And I remember when... Um, of course, I, I grew up on the farm, but a lot of my cousins grew up in the city of Dubuque or other towns. They never had the experience with animals, and they're just intrigued with mm -hmm. seeing pigs and cows and being out <coughs> in the creek and yes. doing those sorts of things. So there's something healing about that, you know, yeah. just to be with nature and God's creation and so on. It's like on. they were saying, you know, children don't even go out today. Mm -hmm. You know, part of it's danger, yeah. but the other part is like everybody's on their cell phone to do whatever they're doing in the house, and you miss so much of the natural order, yeah. mm -hmm. getting in touch with what it's, it's all about. It's one of the books that God speaks to us, reveals himself to mm -hmm. us. That's, uh, you know, that ancient teaching that we have the book of the scriptures, but we also have the book of nature, mm -hmm. and we see something of who God is and the things that he has made. St. Bonaventure called it his footprints, mm -hmm. you know, so... If you were tracking a deer or something and you see, well, these tracks are there, you say, well, that's a deer. And we can look at creation. We can say, wow. oh, I can see something of God and what he's made. I like mm -hmm. that. So his, va his, his immensity, yeah. you know, light years across is our universe. We can't even imagine yeah. this. And yeah. God created that. Yeah. And then the beauty, sometimes we're just in awe of the beauty of mm -hmm. his creation, of mm -hmm. his nature, the order of it. So he's put a certain <clears throat> order in things. And I was talking about that in a recent homily too. You know, the whole scientific method really came out of the Catholic faith, an idea that God put an order in creation and it's for us to discover it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, so many things. What are you going to be doing for Thanksgiving, Father? What does it look like for the friars? Are you going to be here? It is. It's really a nice, quiet time here. So... The employees are all gone, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just quiet here on the campus. There's no big liturgies or anything to prepare for, so Thanksgiving's one of my favorite times, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And our wonderful cook, Portia, um, she's going to prepare everything the day before, and all we have to do is put it in the oven mm -hmm. so we can just enjoy the day and enjoy each other. So. Absolutely Beautiful. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it'll be a nice day and get out and give thanks and praise yeah. to the Lord and just kick back and let down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Father, why don't you close us in a prayer and with a blessing. All praise and all thanksgiving be to you, O God, as our forefathers in this country taught us to do, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, that we must render thanks to you, our Creator, for the many blessings that we so often take for granted, but that we enjoy every day. Help us to be thankful. Mm -hmm. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Every good and perfect gift, the Word of God tells us, comes down from above, from the Father of lights. Every good, every perfect thing is coming down from Him, the Father of lights. And there's no variable or shadow of turning from Him. It's only good. It's only light. That's His divine will for you. May you be welled up with gratitude and thanksgiving. And may this be somehow, some way, the best Thanksgiving of your life. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>